and welcome to Wrong Way. And this is the review of the veteran Sherman. So, let me tell you more about First of all, also huge thanks to eRights.co.uk for providing me the veteran Sherman for testing purposes. Naturally, if you want to find out more about it or just buy it, the links are in the description below. And currently, this machine I'm writing right now on the video is probably the most performance in the smallest package you can get right now in the whole PEV world. The Veteran Sherman is made by X Gotway Engineers and this machine under this brand is their first ever product they came out with and the specs are just literally insane. The battery is a 3.2 kilowatt hour monster of a package. It's a 24S and 10P unit like that's just insane, it's 240 cells. What benefits does it give you in real life? Well, it's the first ever machine on my channel that got a above 100 kilometer range in my usual driving. I mean, riding, it's like I was riding 60 kilometers an hour, 40, it wasn't a slow paced test ride like I did uh, a long time ago with the Dualtron X where I got 110 kilometers and with the MSS I did 120 but this was under very usual wrong whale style, style of riding. Mesdames et Messieurs, I have a challenge for you. I really don't like long range range tests where I lock powerful PEVs so I can check like the real range with driving really slowly but you convince me to do this range test if this video gets 500 likes until the end of the week so then next week i will get a seat from uh, from zoom wheels brian and we shall see what is like the maximum maximum range of the sherman with the block wheel and really slow riding around 30 kilometers an hour so hit that like button if you want to see that.
I will show you some performance tests I did during owning and you know riding the Sherman in a while. But first of all, the ride experience is awesome. The knobby tire is uh, actually quite grippy, but also bumpy. So if you run into a bigger pothole or you have some kind of bump, the wheel will jump around. Yeah, you need to be aware of that. As you can see on this video right here, the paddles are, the foot plates are really low to the ground, which benefits into the stability, but it's also really to scrape it if you drive slower or if you just want to make a super sharp turn. The batteries are also evenly distributed around the center of the wheel, which also adds to the insane stability of this wheel. You don't really feel the speed when you go on a really nice surface with the Sherman. People say this is a... 20 inch wheel but in reality you can see here that this is a 14 14 by 2.75 tire so it's actually the same size when it comes to the rim as the Broadway MSP MSX but if you want to measure it 52 centimeters so and if you want to measure the width it is around 9 centimeters So really, when it comes to performance, it's just so easy to ride this thing on a street. Basically, you never worry about charging it. I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about bringing a charger with me when I just ride the Sherman. Let's get into the performance test, but you need to keep in mind that I had not the latest software installed on the Sherman, so I still had a bit of pedal dipping when accelerating super hard and it also was happening during turns. You can also see the cast on my hand, so yeah, I could definitely get a better 0 to 50 time, but oh well, I, I, I need to watch out. So yeah, I could definitely see myself improving that quite significantly, but yeah, without the cast. Anyhow, you can definitely feel the 35 kilograms underneath your legs on the veteran Sherman. It's uh, it's also a very speed focused motor, so it's actually quite a bit more easy to overpower it, especially when you go at low speeds. And if you want to like just feel zippy and faster, probably the MSP will feel like that. It basically feels like nothing in between your legs, like, as opposed to the veteran, which is a big thing between your legs. And yes, that's what she said. You definitely need to lean in more to accelerate and to brake. It's even harder to brake. You really need to commit to, you know, accelerate or decelerate fast on this electric unicycle but once you do it I mean the power is extremely smooth and whilst other unicycles will you know stop accelerating that powerful when you go above 50 this just keeps on going and there's like no wobbles at all unless you you know, you know just have a weird position oh whatever let's move on to the uh, hill climb When it comes to hill climbs, I didn't find that this was like the best performance. Um, especially I felt like there was a bit of pedal dip when I was going upwards, but 
maybe it's just the fault of the software. I didn't have any power pads on, but I did climb the same incline with a monster without power pads and actually the monster felt a bit more powerful. But you know, maybe it needs some future testing or it's just not that good or that torquey with hill climbs. I did also try how the veteran behaves off-road and here it actually behaves surprisingly well. Uh, the thing is, like, the knobby tire is awesome, like, it doesn't throw you in, like, left and right in the directions because you have just these knobs that, you know, just propel you mostly forwards, which is super cool, and it doesn't have this annoying Gotway pedal dip. Uh, when you just run into, you know, small bumps in small succession, it just doesn't have that. And the weight is fine too. I mean, it doesn't feel like, you know, as zippy as a King Song 16X off-road, but I wouldn't mind riding the veteran off-road, and I would not like to ride a uh, Godway Monster off-road. So here, actually really, really good. Naturally, even though it has a big size tire, it's not as good as suspension and the pedals are a bit low. You can hit stuff if you, you know, if you're just not too aware, but as you can see on these routes, like most of the stuff you can clear pretty easily and just look at the grip of this knobby tire. You can just go through mud and water. That's awesome. Dude, this is like a pile of mud I would never get into on any wheel, but here, easy. You can like turn on it? Yeah. Yeah. Now look, I know this EUC is not all about just pros, but they're also cons. So feel free to pause the video to check out Jan Svoboda's comments. I just read them always in the videos because they're very helpful. For me, the most important point is the point seven is like no easy firmware updates. They're, the light blinds people like, like the MSP. There is no daytime running light as on the V11. There is no speaker and uh, actually it's not very well visible from the side so because there's no rgb so it would be also helpful to get some you know reflective stuff on the wheel i also disagree with some of the stuff you can you know just listen carefully to the video to find out which ones and i think that you know the sherman is super stable and uh, the low pedal thing is it's just a preference thing it's you know just not as high as msp or v11 it definitely adds to the overall stability Even without a actual seat, I really did enjoy riding the veteran trim and seated, especially because there is a pipe to grab onto. I mean, it looks kind of funny, but it really does work well and it adds you an additional point of friction onto the electric unicycle. So that's really cool. And that is also how I achieved my like max speed on the Sherman around like 74 uh, kilometers an hour. Yeah, this was actually seated because then there's less drag.
So now, now that we are in a bit of a quieter area, I wanted to show you around the Sherman a bit. Um, yeah, just show you how it's built, how it's made and, and, and so on, what features it uh, provides. And dude, first of all, this is, boom, this is just a tank, Sherman. This piping is awesome. I'm sure that it will, you know, if it falls flat on, your, flat on, this, on its face, maybe the light will break, but actually you can exchange it pretty easily. It's just a headphone jack here, and two screws on the bottom. Yeah, and you can and you can exchange the headlight for a new unit. This is just so robust. This just makes the Gotway Monster look really bad. I I also like the plastic on the side here. It's pretty durable. It's pretty thick. And maybe you don't know, but the paddle hangers here, so where you are basically standing on this part, is actually quite a bit wider than on the Gotways. I think it's 30 millimeters as opposed to 20-25. So this is pretty cool too. Uh, the foot plates are really narrow, like compared to like a Gotway Nikola foot plate or no, a Kingsong foot plate, this is quite narrow. So I don't find it good to have any sort of side pads here because I just fall off the wheel. So that's just why I have these Velcro parts here. I try to use the UC guy side pad. I try to use the uh, side pads that, were, that e rides provided, but yeah, I just like it bare naked the most. And you can also like flick them open. It would be the best to have some sort of you know, plastic part here to make it easier. But they work really well. I, and they also, oh, they actually do have spacers or not? No, they don't have spacers already inside here. Now, moving on to the lights. This is like a super powerful headlight unit. I think it's more powerful than the one on the V11, but it has a different beam. So this will blind people like so much. It's really annoying. But when you drive fast on the road, uh, this is Sort of enough, I think, yeah. I think that driving light just with the headlight unit here is totally enough for nighttime riding. And you can also turn on the police mode. Uh, you know, depends on the legality uh, if you want to turn it on or off. I find it like a really cool option. Sometimes I would just put it on before I cross the street. So the front end lights, really good, but blinding, I, I think there should be like on the V11. V11 is not the industry standard in my opinion, but I think they're more powerful. Uh, then we move on, moving on to the back, there is the diamond <laughs> tail light. Some people love it, some people don't. But it's really bright, it's well visible. It also has like turn signals, sort of. When you when you lean on one side, it just one side turns on. And you can see that it's also replaceable. You can see the two charge ports here. And a great thing of, about the Sherman, I think it's also a bit underrated, is that you have two times five amps charging. So three hours to charge this huge 3200 watt hour battery from zero to hundred percent like that's a game changer in terms of you know just long uh, long cruises and it's, this is what makes the sherman really cool and the chargers are also really quiet and the fan in the sherman is also really quiet so both fans are actually on right now this one and the sherman and they're both like extremely quiet i can like whisper and yeah they're so quiet um there's no mud guard but i think they do did come out with one now and they did come out with a seat so maybe that's for a future update and on the top you can see the trolley handle which sounds wait wait for it yeah there's like a screw <laughs> yeah the... i mean the trolley handle is like not the sturdiest thing but i guess it's like similar to what's you know in all the wheels but could be a bit sturdier um it's pretty cool that it just you know locks in place here and then you just press the button it goes out and yeah it does the job well it's well balanced um and yeah that's just, just that's just good the bad thing about this you know top unit here is that there's no like handle it's just just in the front and the rear and you can very easily if you hold this just you know flip the wheel so yeah it, it's a two-handed operation if you want to carry it up and it weighs 35 kilograms which in my opinion is a lot for a wheel but it's not really heavy uh, so you know if you don't know what i'm talking about try lifting a tech life x9 which is 55 kilograms like a scooter so i think 35 kilograms is like it's okay throughout the whole use of the sherman i just lifted it twice never needed to do it anymore and once again it's like not that hard to lift it so uh, on the top of the Sherman, there is a thing unique, uh, very unique, just basically on the Sherman, you have a display. So I'll, I, I just taped it up with, you know, duct tape, 
because in the first unit, and this is one of the first units, uh, there were issues, you know, with water ingress to the display. Now they fixed it, but you know, I just wanted to make sure that nothing happens to the wheel. Here on the display, there's the button for the light. Turn it on, turn it off. Hold the button to turn on the police light. Uh, here's the button to turn it on and off. It has also really loud beeps. They're well, uh, like hearable when you when you ride fast, but I think that's it, it's a step up from Godway, but still I think could be could be louder. Um, here is uh, the button where you can you know check all the parameters. So there's 800 kilometers on the wheel already. Uh, you know, Afis can tell me when he how many kilometers were on the wheel when he sent it to me, but I think I did like 500, something like that. And you can see the distance and the tilt back is now at 280 kilometers an hour. Very help, very helpful. So uh, you know to change the settings of the Sherman, it's uh, quite a tedious task. I mean, you don't have the app for it, and to upgrade the wheel, it's also really difficult. You just can't connect to it. You have to actually take out the motherboard, and there's a special tool for for it, and blah blah blah. So you can't upgrade the wheel like the King Songs and the Godways and the Emotions so easily. Uh, so now you can see the settings. We have three settings of uh, wait. I, I have to go, go on through. So here you can see the pedal settings: strong, soft, medium. I just write on strong. Uh, here is the pedal level. So you can see actually that it moves in real time. Boom. I just have it on one. That's, that's my favorite. So then we move on, there's the tilt back and the increments here are very funny, like 12, 14 and a half, 17.2, 19, 22, 26, 28, 32.3, 36, 39, 43, 46.1, because 0.1 is important, 50.4, 54.9, 58.2, and 280, like where's 65? <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, I just have it closed and I've, maybe it's just because of the, uh, you know, uh, miles per hour units and so on. And there's also a separate alarm you can turn on. I think the, the increments here are just very similar. Uh, so it just notices, just tells you that you're going at a certain speed. Just have it off. I have it at 280 kilometers an hour. So when I reach 280 kilometers an hour, which I can't on this wheel, unless I'm flying off a plane, then I'll hear the beeps. Uh, this is then the what is it? Oh yeah, the uh, display brightness. It's very funny. It's showing percent, 33, 66, 99. So you never have 100 percent brightness. Really sad. And then you can also uh, calibrate the wheel. So oh yeah, and sleep is what is it? I think it's the transport mode. But I'm not sure. I have to ask a fees. Okay, and we are through with the settings. So. Uh, in total, the wheel, in terms of upgrades, and mainly I'll compare it to Gotway because, you know, it's not a V11 competitor because it's just so much faster. Uh, in terms of upgrades to, like, Gotway wheels, it has way better shell, it has a lot of speed. 104 is free spin, but I think it's more like 95 in terms of GPS speed. So, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, there's around 10% difference in terms of speed from GPS com compared to the uh, display. So that kind of sucks. So if you ride 78 kilometers an hour, you actually ride 71. So yeah, that's that. So the shell is a big upgrade. The light is sort of good and bad because it still blinds people a lot, like a supernova. Rear light is good, double charge boards is also an upgrade, but all the new Gotways will also have, like the powerful Gotways will also have double charge boards. And the display is awesome, that's like a unique feat, and you can always, you know, look down, check how fast you're driving, you can see just, you know, oh, 73, the beep start. Yeah, definitely better weight distribution, and because the pedals are also that low, you also feel more grounded. Well, the, the downside then is that you scrape the pedals a, a lot, and I, w I started to do, like, you know, uh, turns, not in just one circle, but I actually turn and I go backwards and I turn again <laughs> because it's just so easy to scrape the pedals when you when you go slow it's not an issue in my opinion when you go off curbs or upstairs downstairs because it's just when you you know turn here's here's like the part it's it's not that easy to hit this part unless you like sideways or you turn and you hit something then it becomes an issue and here's like another part that you can hit and yeah that's, that's that's just how it is 
And even though the veteran Sherman is a speed demon, you can also ride it like slowly and it's also really planted and comfortable. It's like, it's not too heavy if you ride slow and it's actually very, very stable if you drive like, I ride like five kilometers an hour. It's actually super good at that. And at that speed, you can go for sure much further. And when I did the 100 km range test, I was pretty tired after the ride, but it wasn't actually terrible. I think that the pedal angle is also optimal for long rides. So in total, I think it's like the currently like the best, fastest long range PEV cruiser currently on the market. It's definitely not the most comfortable one because, you know, there is now the there are now the wheels with suspension. But in terms of wheels without suspension, Probably this would be the way to go. Maybe I'm gonna get one and even though it has quite a bit of drawbacks I think it does justify the like 2.6 K pound try uh, price tag at erises.co.uk So yeah, if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this I'll see you in the next video. See you soon